Hello? Is this thing on? We'll find out today when Heat Trace video number four starts right now. Hello again everyone, this is Deshaun from the Dell Prentice Company and I'm coming back to you for video four in our six part heat trace series. Now if you haven't seen the other three videos, you may want to go back and watch those because it's a lot of information. Now for this particular video, we're going to talk about heat trace controllers and heat trace control methods. Now when we talk about heat trace control methods, we're talking about the area in between the power distribution and also the beginning of the heat trace cable known as the power connection kit. Now when I originally learned about controllers it took four whole days of training and when I do lunch and learns it takes about an hour and I condense it way down. So for this video it's no way possible I can talk about every single thing about controllers. So what I'll do is I'll talk about a brief summary of what the controllers can do and its capabilities. Now let's talk about the first control point. That would be the circuit breaker. Now the circuit breaker is simple. It's a protection device against high current, but it's only a on and off switch basically. But the problem is you don't know exactly what's going on with that circuit or the heat trace. Most heat trace is buried up under insulation so you can't physically touch it. So how do you really know that it's on? So we're gonna dive into it a little bit more in depth a little later on whether or not is a circuit breaker the only thing that you really need. First things first, the National Electrical Code states that you need ground fault protection on a heat trace circuit. What that means is it's not the residential ground fault protection, that's personal protection. That's too sensitive. What we need is ground fault protection for equipment. So it's called an equipment protection ground fault breaker. Now, if you put a residential or personal ground fault protection on your heat trace circuit, oftentimes you get what is called nuisance tripping. And essentially, that's because the breaker or the ground fault protection is too sensitive for the heat trace. So you need a little bit more leeway in your equipment protection ground fault circuit so it doesn't trip on just any moisture. On more than one occasion, I've been called to the job site to look at a heat trace circuit because the breaker kept tripping. When I got to the job site, most of the time it was because it was a personal protection ground fault that they use as opposed to an equipment protection. Now, if you ever experienced this, you will know why they call it a nuisance. The second type of control method or control point that we're gonna talk about are thermostats. Now most people know about thermostats, so I'm not gonna go very much in depth in what a thermostat is. However, before we get into that, we, we need to know these two terms. The first term is ambient sensing. The second term is line sensing. Now line sensing is basically when you measure on the actual pipe or vessel. Ambient sensing is when you measure in the actual air temperature around it. So again, Ambient sensing is the air around it. Line sensing is the actual pipe or vessel. So the types of thermostats that I'm talking about today do not provide ground fault protection. So that means you're gonna to have to have a ground fault breaker in the actual panel. But typically, thermostats have a set point. So that means that if it's above the set point, the circuit will not be on and that saves you a lot of energy as compared to the circuit breaker. But even with that, you still don't really know what's going on with that actual circuit and the heat trace. So let's talk a little bit more about the type of thermostats that we can provide. Well, first, we have ambient sensing and also line sensing thermostats. So outside of just ambient sensing and line sensing, you also need to know what type of area or location the thermostat is gonna be used in. We have non-hazardous thermostats and also we have explosion proof or hazardous thermostats. So our hazardous thermostats are rated for class one, division one, and also division two. And they come in ambient sensing and also line sensing. So before you use a thermostat, it behooves you to know exactly what location 
and what requirements you'll have in that location. Now it's time for us to get into actual controllers. Now we're gonna start with our commercial side. A controller basically is not only controls, which means cut it off and on, but also it monitors. And that's the definition of what an actual controller is. So the first controller that we're gonna talk about is our commercial version C910 controller. The C910 controller is a microprocessor based controller for only one single circuit. It ranges from 120 volts all the way up to 277 volts and it goes up to 30 amps for protection. It's rated for indoor and also outdoor use, but it's for non-hazardous locations. Now the C910 controller is a EMR, and that's an electromechanical relay. The C910 monitors high and low temperatures, high and low current, and also it monitors ground fault. So that means you don't need a ground fault equipment protection breaker in your actual electrical panel, this particular controller can handle the re electrical code requirement. The C910 controller also has a dry alarm contact. So that means that you can run two wires back to any building management system and the building management system can manage any particular alarms that may occur on that particular controller. Finally, we also have two RTD inputs. Now, let's talk about what an RTD is. A RTD basically measures the temperature in order to tell the controller when to cut on and off. So, RTDs come in two different types. An ambient sensing RTD and a line sensing RTD. They also come in non-hazardous areas and also hazardous areas. So, you need to know exactly the location and the area and the hazard requirements for that or the classifications for that area. Now we're going to get into our multi-circuit heat trace controller for our commercial side. It's called an Access 30. Now the Access 30 is not just one controller part. It's several different parts. So let's go over those parts now. The Access 30 system voltage range is up to 277 volt and it has circuit protection up to 30 amps. What's astounding by the Access 30 is it could control up to 260 circuits at a time. The Access 30 comes with what I call sub-panels. They're called PCMs for short, and they control up to five different circuits. It's ground far protected on each circuit, and basically to accomplish the 260 circuit control, it daisy chains these sub-panels together with a RS-485 cable, and you run that back to a touchscreen UIT. The Access 30 can also communicate back to a building management system. So this system is so robust that it's made for like large buildings and also complex areas where, where you can have actually multiple buildings. Now let's take a look at the industrial controllers. Now this particular controller, which is called a 910 controller, is really similar to the C910 controller on the commercial side. The differences are the features that's inside the actual controller. Much like the C910, it goes up to 277 volts, it has a current protection up to 30 amps, and it's rated for indoor and outdoor use. Now the difference here would be that you can get the 910 controller in a class one division two suitable enclosure. Another difference with the 910 as opposed to the C910 is the fact that you can get this in the EMR, which is electromechanical relay, or you can get it in an SSR, which is a solid state relay. With the solid state feature, you're able to have an additional mode that you can control, which is called a proportional mode. What that does is, since the, in theory, the solid state relay has an infinite number of off and on that it can perform, well, proportional mode, you can cut the circuit on and off every half a second, maintaining the heat trace temperature, but reducing the output, almost in some cases in half. Just like the C910, the 910 also monitors but an extra monitoring feature would be 
voltage monitoring. You can get the 910 controller with the RS-485 connection point. However, it doesn't come standard. Now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the cousin of the 910 controller. Last year, Invent rolled out a new controller. It's called the Elexant series. We have two different types of Elexant controllers. The first one is a 4010 controller, which is a single circuit. And if you want to compare, it's just like the 910 controller. And what I'll do is I'll just explain a few of the added benefits to this controller as opposed to the 910 controller. So this one has also a touch screen control panel. It has, instead of two RTD inputs, it has actually three RTD inputs. And it comes standard with the RS-45 connection. One of the last features, which is very beneficial, it has a USB port. The USB port is phenomenal because you can pre-program your settings before you get out to the job site. And once you get out to the job site, you could just plug it in using a disc and it'll upload all of your information and you're done. Now we're gonna get into the Alexan 4020. It's a multi-circuit controller. Now this multi-circuit controller replaced the multi-circuit 920 controller last year. We still have a few 920s around, but they're being phased out slowly. This particular controller is just like its sister or brother, which is the 4010. However, it comes with two circuits in that one control module. So each circuit, you can get three RTD inputs, just like the last. So in total, for per module, you'll get six RTD inputs. Okay, so let's say for instance, you have more than just two circuits that you need controlling. Let's say for instance, six or, or eight circuits. Well, Invent Panel Shop, they can make a panel and they'll place the 4020 modules inside the panel to duplicate how many circuits you need. So let's say for instance, you needed eight circuits. Well, they'll put four control modules in there. Remember, each control module controls two circuits. So that's a total of eight circuits. Now let's say for instance, you get to the point where you have 20 or more circuits that you need controlling and the Alexant 4020 panel is not necessarily an option for you. Well, we have another option. It's called an NGC30. This is a multi-circuit control panel and it's very similar to the commercial version of the Access 30. The main difference would be instead of having PCM sub panels, what this has are CRM boards. And basically these are control boards that control five circuits at a time. The NGC30 also has a UIT touchscreen. The UIT touchscreen can come remotely mounted or actually with distribution locally mounted. Instead of only having two or three RTD inputs, the NGC30 can control four RTD inputs for one circuit. Now I'm gonna to introduce to you a module that saves both time and also money. It's called the RMM2. The RMM2 is actually a module. Let me give you an example. Let's say for instance, you have a lot of circuits that you need controlling and you have very long pipe runs and you have RTDs scattered throughout your facility. Well, what you can do is take this RMM2, you can run up to eight different RTDs and then run one RS-45 cable back to the controller. That saves a lot of cable and it saves a lot of time. For 90 plus percent of the applications, the NGC30 is phenomenal and works fine. However, there are a few customers that need a little bit more. I bring you the NGC40. The NGC40 technically runs pretty much similar as the NGC30. However, the components are totally different. Remember that CRM that I talked about in the NGC30, which controls up to five circuits apiece? Well, in the NGC40, we have separate modules. So you run power separately and also control it separately. That means if one of the circuits go down, then you just replace the module and you're back up and running. 
with the, with the NGC30, you will have five circuits that could be compromised. So you will have to replace that board in order to return five circuits to use. Now for the NGC40, you can get it with a 15 inch touchscreen, but that's optional. The NGC30, the UIT is not optional. You have to have that in order for it to operate. So that is an extra bonus feature in the NGC40. You can connect that to your building management system and you can run it with a program we call Supervisor. Now let's get into our panels. So we have two different types of panels that I'm gonna talk about in this video. One is the HTPG and the other one is the HTPI. Now the G stands for group, the I stands for individual. So for the group, panel, we're basically using the thermostat to energize the contactor and the contactor is energizing the entire panel, cutting on all of the heat trace at one time. So the individual panel means that each individual breaker will have its own thermostat that will energize the heat trace circuit. Now each heat trace control panel comes with ground fault protection. It has panel boards of 120 to 208. 120 to 240 or 277 to 480 volt. We have spaces of 18, 30, 42, and also 54 space panels. The panels can come indoor use or outdoor use, and we can also get them as stainless steel panels. So for options, there are plenty of options, but we're not limited to heat trace energized light, a horn or a beacon, heat trace failure light, heat trace trip light, and also it comes with a dry contact alarm that you can control that through the building management system. Now let's get back to the example of using a breaker only in order to control heat trace. Well, let's use this example. Let's say for instance you have a space heater and your space heater has the ability to regulate up and down. So you plug it in, you cut it on, and you leave it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you think that that's a good idea? I don't. That's for you to decide. However, me personally, I would at least want a thermostat on that particular space heater instead of leaving it on all the time. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Please join us for our next video where we'll talk about snow melt systems. This is Deshaun again here, and I'm always reminding you to be safe.